Hey gang, welcome to this week's Live Room Weekend Review. As always, I am your host, Akil Stokes, and I want to thank you for joining me. Uh, seriously, I was, I was doing some prep work for the upcoming uh, Technical Trader Workshop, and I started to think about my own trading journey, and realized it was just about three years ago, around this time, where I really started sharing my experiences with the world. I had just finished taking a training course, and I was managing some money for a client, and well, I figured I'm, I'm, I was too manly, I was too tough to, to buy a diary and, and write down my emotions and my, my thoughts. So uh, a better way to do that would be to start up a blog where I can reflect on my day of trading, reflect on what I saw in the market, lessons I was learning. And well, I knew that I was making a significant amount of mistakes. I knew the journey wouldn't be easy. So hopefully if I were to write it down and share my story then, well, other traders that are trying to do the same thing they would read it and hopefully not make the same mistakes that I made and well you can see in the last three years that has grown so much to the point where I'm doing weekly videos for you guys and getting great comments and great feedback and a lot of subscribers and if you're not subscribed by the way make sure you do so I would really appreciate that uh, but it's uh, it's pretty cool and, and I just want to say I, I really enjoy doing these videos I really enjoy the fact that I'm not just a teacher um, but I get to kind of share my life with you guys and, and my journey and you've really accepted that um, in this week's video we're gonna talk about self-sabotaging your trading I'm gonna go ahead and, and show you uh, a little recap session from one of our live trading days this week but it hasn't been an overly active week um, we were waiting for the big uh, Bernanke announcement which really wasn't a surprise to me but it did stall the markets for a few days with that being said, uh, we did we did find some pretty good opportunities this week, and well, as the month goes, we're gonna we're gonna keep this quiet. We're we're quietly, quietly having a really really good month in the live room. It it doesn't seem like it, and I've noticed that my trading is the best when it it doesn't seem like I'm doing well. Um, it doesn't seem like it, but we're up significantly over our monthly average, and uh, if we can keep this going, it's not gonna be. Uh, well, we never know how next week will fare. It's not going to be as much as a home run week like we saw at the end of August. That was just spectacular. Um, but it's it's going to put us on pace to surpass our numbers from last year, which uh, you know is always a goal. Kaizen, uh, continuous improvement. Always want to do better than uh, before. So I'm excited about that, but we'll we'll keep that quiet until the until the week is over. Anyway, I'm going to flash back, give you a live room recap video. Then after that's done, I'm going to come back and talk about. Um, a great lesson we we actually had in live room about self-sabotaging your trading and well how the easiest way to make money is just not to blow it uh, but we'll, we'll get into that a little later enjoy the video and I'll see you guys in a few minutes not a bad way to start the week we popped in the live room on Tuesday and got straight to action there was a uh, some slow movement to begin with or some lack of movement to begin with but we did find a few opportunities throughout the day we started off on New Zealand dollar and you can see this on uh, if I bring over my range bar chart we actually did quite a bit of analysis on here but we started off with a potential bat pattern on the 15 minute chart and I'm gonna show you it on the range bar chart because well that's that's what I have and this was one that I actually didn't take because if I bring my Fibonacci retracement in, you'll see that price action actually comes about a tick short of my 50 percent retracement my price action came to about 81.89. My 50% retracement, you can see, is up here at 81.90. And well, if you've been following me for any time now, if you've been in the ratio room or just know my trading style, I am really precise with these uh, with these Fibonacci retracements and, and what I need to qualify each pattern or, or each type of trade setup I take. And there's no real gray area. There's no oh, it's close enough or it's, it's almost there. It's either it hits it or doesn't hit it and in this case it didn't hit it uh, so I had to pass on this bat pattern however I did find a reason to enter later and we actually had a double top with some RSI diversions to a CTS trade a combined technical score type trade up here and you can see New Zealand was stopped out so took a loss on this and well like with most advanced patterns after we take a loss obviously the price action is going to break through our X leg over here which is a crucial structure level so as soon as we took this loss we kind of shook it off reversed ourselves and started looking for a potential trend continuation opportunity and although I didn't personally get a chance to enter this you can see price action shot up we came right back down to our previous structure 
um, our X leg right here you can see our big DSR zone which was red and turned to green as soon as price action uh, closed above it and well we we've shot up right to our predictive level and actually we're we're setting up for another one as well and of course this all comes from doing higher time frame confirmation as well uh, we did have one winner to go along with that loser it was on pound yen we had a nice nice Gartley pattern or nice uh, nice bat pattern here on pound yen you can see we came right to our uh, right to our completion point and you'll notice you're saying to kill I thought the bat pattern completes at the, the 886 it looks like price action didn't quite get there well that's why we, we front run our orders uh, by at least the spread I do so about by about two pips so our 886 here is at 15806 I had my orders right here at 15804 so we price action came up to 15805 got me filled and then a, a pretty easy winner on here we hit target one at 15770 uh, so about it was about 30 a little more than 30 pips in there yeah a little about 30 pips in there 34 35 somewhere um, and we're looking for target twos to be hit if the price actually will come back down so one loser one winner not a bad day uh, the pound the pound yen bat pattern win was pretty good didn't take too big of a loss on a New Zealand dollar and if we come down to hit target two we'll definitely make up for that loss with no problem Okay, so I want to cover this topic real quick about self-sabotaging your trading and how the easiest way to blow your account is basically by making those mistakes. And many of you have heard my story over and over again about how I went along the path of just eliminating one mistake per month. But that really is the, the secret to success. Now, when you have a, a system that you're trading, it should have a positive expectancy, meaning that over time, if you trade the same strategy or same system over and over again, it should make money I mean if it's not making money then why are you trading it so you can kinda of predict how much your system is gonna make you can say hey per year this system should produce this or per month this system should produce this obviously it depends on whether you're a day trader or a swing trader um, the equity curve is gonna ebb and flow a bit but you should have a good idea of, of what your system makes so with that being said if you just simply follow your system you should make that much money now the problem is, is when people make the mistakes because each time you make a mistake or in the case of the, the live room lesson rush into a trade you take your you, you, you take money out of that pot meaning this if you were to trade your system perfectly for a month let's say it would produce 500 pips now each time you make a trading mistake you enter a trade emotionally um, for this example, the, I think we had a really, really slow day, and, and some of the traders were talking about, well, I can't deal with these slow days. I, I got I to gotta pull the trigger. I got I to gotta trade something, or I don't feel like I'm a, a real trader. Well, each time you, you make one of those emotional mistakes, and say you lose money, say you lose uh, 50, 50 pips on the trade. Well, now you just took 50 pips out of your overall profit. Now your profit went from 500 to 450. Say you make other mistakes taking profits off early say you enter a, a big trade on the uh, on a four-hour chart and it's, it's at a, a crucial or a, a critical level like the, the the pound Swiss and you're up a hundred pips your target is at you know 250 pips so you still have a ways to go but you get scared you get nervous Bernanke speaking uh, let me exit the trade well now you've taken another 150 pips 150 pips away from your 500 so you went from 500 to 450 you take another 150 away now you're down to 300 max and, and you can see each mistake you make is you know taking money from that pot now again you're probably asking yourself well we, there's no way we're gonna know if that trade is gonna win or not um, and that's true we don't know whether each individual trade will win or lose but based on our strategy based on our back testing again based on our back testing um, and based on that positive expectancy we can basically we can basically assume how much we're gonna make each month it sounds crazy but it's true we take our live room stats I I know exactly what my win percentage will most likely be at the end of the month or end of the year I know exactly how much I'll probably make by the end of the year and and it's simply because I just do the same thing over and over again and my back testing told me this uh, my historical results told me this and unless something drastic happens it should be around the same area so the key point in that story was, and I'm sorry I didn't give a better example today, I, I 
should have wrote down what we actually talked about. But the key was every time you make one of those simple mistakes, you're taking money out of your potential profit. And that potential profit is used to protect yourself against losses that you're going to take anyway. No system is 100% correct, so you're going to take losses. But as long as your wins are outnumbering those losses as far as the, the profit mark, you know, uh, you're going to be successful. As soon as you start taking money from those wins, then it becomes a little more balanced and those losses, you know, either surpass you and you have a losing month or you become that, that break-even trader that, that many of you guys um, are at. Most traders I meet are just stay around break-even. They have good month, bad month, good month, bad month. So, again, moral of the story is don't make mistakes. Uh, don't get emotionally driven into trading. If, if it's a slow day, just don't trade. You know, trade on a demo account. Do some back testing. Do something else. But you know, don't divert from your plan because as soon as you do that, you 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 grab the money out of that potential profit pot, and that just that just screws the numbers. Trading is a numbers game. We got to stick to the numbers. So, all right, I'm rambling. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. I will see you guys next week in the syndicate uh, for you syndicate mem uh, syndicate members. I will see you guys next week in the live room for you live ratio room members. And hopefully I will see all of you September 30th for the technical trader workshop. Take care traders, plan your trade, trade your plan. I'm out.